In this tutorial, we will learn the detailed workflow of Metapipe. In addition to the beginner tutorial, you will learn how to modify your blend shapes. Rest of the tutorial is same with beginner tutorial. Also, if this is the first time using Metapipe, I highly recommend you to watch beginner tutorial. Let's start. First, let's load up our starter scene. Then, click on the Load DNA button. This step initializes our process. Everything we change between Load DNA and Save DNA will be our final result. With the scene loaded, now we can bring in our custom meshes. Note that controllers are not working right now, they will be working after Save DNA. We'll need a minimum of three meshes, the head, the right eye, and the left eye. If your character contains body, make sure to import that too. Additionally, if you have other meshes like custom eye shells, cartilage, or anything else, feel free to import those as well. Otherwise, Metapipe will create other meshes on average shape. You also have the option to edit these meshes if you'd like later. Select all the meshes you want to modify. Ensure that they have the same topology and vertex order as their original references. While they're selected, hit Joint Transform. This might take a bit of time. Once it's done, you can continue making modifications like adjusting joints, moving vertices, or editing neutral pose with blend shapes. If you're all set, simply save your DNA. This rebuilds everything from scratch, so it'll also require some time. Once the DNA is saved, we'll see our updated MetaHuman. Now our controllers should be active. Let's test them out. We may want to tweak some expressions. There's a new button called Blend Shape Export. This exports all the required meshes to the DNA calibration output Blend Shapes folder. In this tutorial, I'll only be editing the eyes. I'll use ZBrush, but you can use other sculpting programs like Blender or even Maya if you prefer. It exports the meshes that mostly used, but you can also export and modify other expressions as OBJ manually if needed. I will open ZBrush and use the Subtool Master in the Plugins Manager to multi-append all. Let's take a look at our meshes. I'll delete the ones that I won't be using. Now I can begin sculpting. As you can see, some meshes have symmetrical double shape is available. I suggest sculpting the double shape and then extract parts from it. It will be more accurate and less work. Let's start sculpting the combined mesh. Mask the area where we want to blend it back to the original shape. Then, let's store Morph Target and import the neutral mesh inside Blend Shapes folder on top of it. With the mask active, use the Morph slider to revert the shape back. This separates the expression. Repeat this for the separated part. If everything looks good, we can export it. Pay attention to the naming. It needs to match the previous exported mesh naming for automatic setup to work. You can check the naming from the main Blend Shapes folder. Then, it's your call, but I suggest creating a new folder named Modified and exporting them as OBJ files inside this folder. Otherwise, you can export it anywhere, but still naming will be important. Let's return to our Maya scene and batch import our modified meshes. Once imported, you can hide them for easier work. I'll show you three ways to add Blend Shapes. First, the automatic setup. If your naming is correct, this code will take care of the rest. Select all the modified meshes and hit the corrective blend shape button. That's it. The second method is for individual shapes that not in the list of automatic setup. 
This method only applies to the head mesh. Activate your shape by using controllers. Open Shape Editor and within the Head Blend Shapes, locate your shape by finding the active shape with a value of 1. Ensure your controller and shape value are set to 1 or minus 1. Then, disable only this shape by clicking the related button. Select your custom mesh and run the corrective blend shape. After the process, don't forget to turn it back on. Let's test it out. It works. The third method is quite similar to the second one, but this time we'll enable edit mode instead of disabling blend shape. This code is accessible through the MetaPipe UI and works with meshes that have their own blend shapes connected to the MetaHuman rig, including eyes, teeth, cartilage. Let's try one. Again, open the shape editor, activate the blend shape, find it, and hit the edit button. Then select your custom mesh and run the blend shape edit code. Remember to turn it off edit mode afterward. Testing it out, it works. You can choose whichever method you prefer or even use all methods together. To summarize, the first is for automatic setup, specifically for the head with specific namings. The second method works only with the head by disabling shapes. The third method works with meshes that have blend shape connections inside the shape editor by enabling edit mode. I've applied my custom blend shape, and now we can proceed by clicking the toggle button. It's time to set up our body. Even if you're only focusing on the head mesh, having a body is crucial for the skeleton hierarchy. You can use the default MetaHuman body we exported earlier or import your custom mesh. Please click prepare to export first. Then import your body mesh into the scene, ensuring it has the same UVs as the metahuman. A lack of UVs can cause freezing issues in the process. Select it and run build body. You might see a shader error due to DirectX, but it's not important. Just check if your rig is working correctly. If it is, then everything is okay. After this process, you can still edit your body, meshes, and expressions. Once you're done with the shapes, Let's fix our seam area. We'll follow the official workflow this time. First, let's take a look at the seam fix button. This button functions differently based on the mesh. If you have the original MetaHuman topology, it'll directly fix the mesh without needing a selection. However, if it's a custom topology mesh, you'll need to select the border vertices before running the code. Before moving on, we also need to apply a vertex color map to the head mesh. This is a specific map and needs to be assigned to the head vertices. When we press prepare to export, this map was generated inside the DNA calibration data folder. To assign this vertex color texture to our head and avoid seams in Unreal, select the head mesh and go to mesh display. Click on paint vertex colors. Inside there, locate attribute maps and import the file. Navigate to the DNA Calibration Data folder and select the image named Vertex Color. After doing this, you'll notice your head mesh gets colored. It's time to export our meshes. Before exporting, I will delete meshes that I want use. You cannot delete meshes inside Unreal. So for example, if you don't use eyelashes or any other, please delete them. I will also delete extra LODs. You can only export one LOD at a time. So if you want to work with LODs, please export them one by one and set up them inside Unreal. After deleting process, we will assign materials for each mesh to give separate shaders inside Unreal. To do that, please select meshes that should have different shader and press Material Assign. Let's set up our export settings to finalize our process. Open Export Selected Options. Inside it, Make sure you have include options. Under geometry, please check tangents and binormals. Preserve instances and referenced assets content. Turn off animation. Check all of other settings and when you set them, you can close window. At the end, you will have head and body FBX files and a DNA file. Please click on export. And that's it. 
Good luck with your metahumans and bye.